The Anglo-Boer War, also known as the South African War, ravaged from 1899 to 1902. This war, in which Britain and the Boer Republics in the Free State and Transvaal were the main adversaries, represents the most devastating military conflict in the history of South Africa. Seeing themselves as an essential part of the British Empire and being of the view that their own military security depended on the continuing strength of this empire, about 15,000 Australian volunteers enlisted or were seconded to support the British war effort in South Africa. As part of its 120-year commemoration of the conflict, the War Museum of the Boer Republics in Bloemfontein, South Africa, presented an international conference from 9 to 11 October 2019. On Saturday, 12 October 2019, a post-conference day tour to the Driefontein battle site was organized and hosted by the association Friends of the War Museum and Dr. Garth Bennyworth, Chairperson of the Council of the War Museum and Head of the Department of Heritage Studies at the Sol Plaikie University in Kimberley. The name Driefontein literally means Three Fountains. The aim of the tour was to dedicate a new memorial to commemorate fallen British and Australian soldiers buried near a temporary field hospital on the battlefield, which had recently been erected on the initiative of Dr. Bennyworth. The once neglected burial site includes the grave of a senior Australian officer, while the memorial also commemorates another Australian soldier who went missing in action and has no identified grave. Against this background, the Australian High Commissioner in South Africa, Ms. Gita Kamath, was invited to attend the event and also participate in the dedication of the new memorial. Driefontein is located about 80 kilometers from Bloemfontein, halfway en route to Kimberley. The battle took place in one of the most harsh and desolate areas in central South Africa. Driefontein battle was fought on 10 March 1900 between the forces of the Orange Free State Republic and the forces of the South African Republic Transvaal. So you had two independent Boer states with their armies represented there, commanded by Generals de la Rey and Generals de Vette. The British force was moving from the Paderbach area behind it towards Bloemfontein, which was about three days' march from Bloemfontein. This was part of the invasion of the Orange Free State Republic by the British Army, and Bloemfontein was the capital city of the Orange Free State Republic, which was now under direct threat of being captured. So the Boer aim was to put up a defensive action or a holding action while defences around Bloemfontein could be prepared. The British objective, the British forces comprised, one, uh, comprised of one infantry division, namely the 6th Infantry Division, commanded by General Kelly Kenny, and the Cavalry Division, commanded by Generals French. Lord Roberts, who was an overall commander of the South African Field Force, was not on the battle when it started, but his forces came in right towards the end. So you had this titanic clash that occurred on these copies and ridges around the Driefontein and Arbemuskral area. The battle site in its length is approximately 15 kilometers in length, although the main attack which went in against the Boer position by the British infantry was to the one extremity of the, of the terrain. The Boers put up a determined resistance, hence very high casualties among, among their forces, a very determined resistance, but then equally so the British infantry who had been on the march on half rations, in fact quarter rations, put in a very determined infantry attack, at bayonet point, superbly supported by artillery, so it was a case of concentrated force, concentrated fire at the concentrated point, which decisively broke the Boer forces, thereby opening the way for uh, Bloemfontein, which the British Army captured three days later. The casualties in the battle were high by standards of the time, and it depends what sources you read as to what those casualty figures are. So for example, on the Boer monument at Driefontein, there's not actually a lot of names. However, British records which are accurate reflect that at least on the main ridge there were 107 dead Boers buried the following morning. There are records which I have found of Boer parties returning much later to bury deceased Boers in other parts of the battle site. So casualties could have been up to 150 possibly. And of course there would have been those who died of their wounds as well. Their graves have never been located. British casualties were high. It was approximately in the 80s to 100. The British troops were buried where they were killed in action in mass graves on top of the main battle site. And those of whom were wounded in action were brought to a nearby farmhouse, the one that, that we're interested in, 
and their, a number of them died of their wounds over the course of the next two weeks until the hospital was shut and those fit enough were then moved to Bloemfontein. One of these was Lieutenant Colonel Charles Ernest Umphelby, who was the highest ranking Australian to die in the conflict in South Africa. He was hit in the liver by a bullet on the 10th of March 1900 during the closing stages of the action, languished in a dressing station that night, was brought along with the rest of the wounded into the field hospital on the morning of the 11th of March 1900, and there he died on the night of the 12th of March 1900 and was buried along with his compatriots in a very small burial site uh, a couple of hundred metres behind the building. After an hour and a half's drive, the visitors arrived at Trifontein, almost in the middle of nowhere. Here they could experience the barren, hot and wind-swept nature of the terrain firsthand. The burial site is located about 200 meters from the farmhouse that served as a temporary field hospital to the wounded more than a century ago. The restored gravesite of those who died in the field hospital and especially the newly erected memorial in their honor drew keen interest from the visitors. My interest in the Driefontein battle arose in the 19, late 1980s. Uh, you know, when one read at the time about battles in the Kimberley Bloemfontein area from the South African War or Anglo Boer Wars, it was known then. One always read about the big battles Belmont, Model River, Marcusfontein, the Siege and Relief of Kimberley, and in particular part of Bach Battle Site, which is very close to Driefontein. However, Driefontein was always just a footnote in history, it was a one liner or a byliner to the end of that particular phase of the campaign. And that intrigued me because I thought to myself, well, there has to be more to the story than what, is, what one is reading, or what is generally there, and there certainly is. So in 1989, I first journeyed up to Driefontein, equipped with an historic map and a contemporary 1 in 50,000 cartography map, worked out where the site was in that trip, located the historic farmhouse and the historic graveyard, which we're concerned with, the Driefontein farm. And by the late 1990s, well, 1994, had, had, had walked that terrain extensively and still did into the late 1990s. I moved to Kimberley in November 2014 to take up a position at Salt Lake University, which had just opened, and this provided the ideal opportunity for me to revisit Driefontein and to see what had happened or not. And when I went there in 2015 with an Australian friend of mine who knows the site, who'd come out to visit me from Australia, Mr. Steve Knott, we went to the site and to our horror we found it was completely overgrown and in fact we, we couldn't even work out where the burial site was anymore and we decided something needed to be done about this. The memorial arose from the fact that the site had never been maintained ever since the soldiers were first buried there in March 1900. Overgrown during all the times I visited it and others visited it uh, with uh, dense thorns, one could hardly approach it many times, you had to actually hack your way through to actually locate these graves and therefore it was actually faced with the risk of environmental destruction. So in 2017 I approached the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, it's their mandate to maintain British graves their director, the South African officer Jean Marais, met me in Petersburg nearby and we drove out to Driefontein. Much to our surprise, we found that the farm had changed ownership in the, in the interim period and that the current landowner had actually fenced the cemetery in at his own expense, in a wire fence. Um, but of course the vegetation still posed the risk and what to our horror we found was that in fact animals had actually burrowed into the graves and dug up you know, human remains, femur bones, teeth, their vertebrae and so on, which were strewn across the felt. I personally reburied those human remains and the director of the Commonwealth War Graves Board in South Africa then undertook that the, they would restore these graves, which they subsequently did in 2018. And as for the memorial itself, uh, through my Australian friend and another friend in Australia, uh, Jason McGregor in Melbourne and my friend Stephen Knott and his wife Laura Knott, we embarked on a fundraising campaign in Australia where we very quickly raised the amount of money necessary to construct this memorial. The particulars of the deceased, they were provided by Commonwealth War Graves Commission. I obtained information out to verify this from other sources in the United Kingdom. So we had a role of honour as such. And the monument was uh, commissioned here in Kimberley. I supervised that with a local mason. Uh, we had it brought out to site, erected on site in the week before the event 
proceedings at the event included Dr. Bennyworth providing a brief historical contextualization of the gravesite and memorial. This was followed by a ceremony during which the High Commissioner laid a wreath on behalf of the Australian people. Next, Dr. Bennyworth, as initiator of the memorial project, laid a wreath. The ceremony likewise included the current farm owner, Mr. Sabata Tsoanyane, and the knot couple, Stephen and Lauren, laying a wreath on behalf of the Australian donors. Thereafter, Mr. Toki Pretorius, director of the War Museum of the Boer Republics, also paid his respects. The ceremony concluded with the playing of the last post and the visitors observing a minute of silence. The significance of, of what we've done here and the project that I've, I've developed and led is that this is an era from a past in South Africa which is more than 120 years ago now virtually. And there are other pressing priorities in the South African heritage landscape. So we're dealing with graves in this particular instance which were completely neglected at face of destruction and yet they are part of South African history and in fact global history and therefore worthy of preservation. However with scarce resources it's also important that we have stakeholders. We can't rely on state authorities to provide financing for these sorts of things and it is good and it is appropriate that people from their own accord actually get involved. So in this case we had a very unique situation, one which does not happen very often where we had the landowner involved, Mr. Sabat and Swane. We had private donors involved in Australia, myself, who raised the money. We had a, an international body, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission involved, who undertook to preserve the graves. So it's a stakeholder project, and that's how these things actually do work, and they work very well. If we rely purely on the state to do something, that's not sufficient. And it's possibly a template to show how projects like this can be done in South Africa and elsewhere where we are faced with limited resources. That in fact resources can be mobilized if after a, a degree of creative thinking as such and the enthusiasm and dedication of those involved. Afterwards, Dr. Bennyworth took the visitors on a short tour of the battle site. Then the visitors departed for Bloemfontein again, leaving behind both a symbolic and tangible tribute to those who sacrificed their lives in the war. Most of those who fought at Drifontein did not think they were fighting someone else's war. Like the Boer commandos, the great majority were patriots who believed that they were fighting for a worthy cause. The commemorative event on 12 October 2019 also signifies that now, more than a hundred years after the smoke cleared from the Drifontein battlefield, there are still compatriots and ordinary people who still remember and care.